Hey, I'm broadcasting live from an undisclosed location somewhere in the Northeast. And uh, we are three days out from the Canandaigua Lake Trout Derby. It's a charitable fishing contest in its 40th annual uh, th is this year. This is the first year we're participating. Um, according to their Facebook page, since they started, they've raised $189,000 for charity. So you can't lose when you're in a tournament like that. And I thought that for uh, the next uh, three days, I would show you what I'm doing to prepare for it to make sure that everybody has fun. Hey, we are two days out from the Canandaigua Lake Trout Derby. And, uh... I found this hat as I was shopping for other items today and it's going to save my life because the forecast now is uh, Saturday sunny 80 to 85 and it might be dang dong windy but this is going to keep the sun off of my head and it's got little holes up here that's going to let the breeze through. Uh, this thing was cheap. Straw hat. Not expensive at all. As promised, uh, today we are uh, checking the mailbox uh, see all the uh, things we got recently, all our upgrades and equipment and whatnot like that. So we'll start right away. Uh, first, you know, we decided that it's going to be a long couple of days on the water, so we wanted to have, uh, and we wanted to be able to do some trolling. So the first thing I thought of was got to get some rod holders and I found uh, these online. It's a Canon uh, rod holder and uh, they are heavy duty. Um, I think they're going to be pretty good. And then once we had the rod holders, I thought, man, well, we've got to attach them to the boat. Uh, I didn't want to do it permanently. I don't want to put any holes in the boat. So I do have a rail system. So I uh, found a couple of rails. And this is the first one I got uh, received in the mail. Uh, this is from a company called Depth Raider. And this is a solid piece of metal here with all the hardware I need and then I actually found the ones for the Lund on eBay which were double the price no holes or hardware although it does have this pretty groovy uh, clip mechanism that uh, Lund has for the track but Guess what? You give me the hardware, I put it on. This is much more heavy duty. These are ready to roll. I really like these depth raider mounts. And they do the they use the same method I was gonna use, which was just to take a carriage bolt and flatten off one of the pieces so it'll slide in the track and then and then you turn it sideways. So this is what we're gonna be doing for the trolling. And these I they seem a little they're made out of plastic. And I'll probably use them for something else. Uh, let's see. Oh, then this. These are. This is really cool. This is a fantastic piece of industrial engineering. I might save this though 
for another show, maybe even another season. We're not going to be we're not going to be using that in the tournament. Oh, what's this though? Look at this huge box that came. What? What is it? So I don't really have any trolling rods. We decided we were going to need lead core to get down to the depths we want to do. So found this from a sporting goods store that sells stuff online because they didn't have it in stock. It's an Akuma. It was a combo. This thing is ginormous. It's uh, the rods eight feet, six inches long. It's got a depth counter on there, which is nice, but um, we're using lead cord that is a different color every 10 yards. So that'll let us know how how much line we have out and give us an idea how deep we are. And I'll explain to you how we have things strung up in a sec. Because... Um, the other, well, actually, I'll do this rod first. So, on this rod, I actually, on, I'll show you the other rod we're using. This is a classic. Now, this rod spans several generations. I bought this, this is an ugly stick. Look how small. Look how small. It's like three feet, eight inches. Uh, it's a kid's ugly stick that had one of them little, you know, press the button uh, lures on, uh, reels on it. And I switched it to, this is my grandpa's, it's also a Shakespeare. Uh, they make ugly stick. This is a Shakespeare old school service reel. Just a beauty. And I've used this for so much stuff from fishing different the only thing you can't do is cast very far because it's a pretty short rod but this is one of my favorite rods you can you can slingshot lures bing, uh drop shot just drop some bait fly kites we fly the fish kite at the island with this at the thousand islands with this thing it's beautiful so um, we're going to be trolling with this too. Now, the way we got these rods set up, they both start, like I warned you yesterday, this will be the most technical uh, three-cast broadcast ever, but I'm going to keep it simple. Um, first, we wind this stuff onto the reels. It's the same. It's a really nice braid. It's like 30-pound test, the blue braid. Um, by Power Pro. It's kind of expensive, but I already had it on the reels, and um, in these cases, I wanted it even as backer. And then we do the suffix 832 on the small rod. I have three colors of 12 pound test. And on the big rod, I got seven colors of 18 pound test. So, and then on each, on the smaller one, I got a six pound leader, about, I think, 24 feet, and on the other one, 25 feet, a 10 pound leader. It's a little bit lighter than what I learned recommendations are, but I always go light with my string, because uh, I'll just adjust the drag. I'll get more hits, and then I'll adjust the drag to compensate, and, and it's, uh, hopefully works out better in the long run that way. Um, so, uh, what'll happen with this is every color, every 10 yards, it'll sink the line seven feet. So, the smaller rod gives us, um, with the leader, that'll be another seven feet. Uh, this smaller rod gives us about a 28 foot range and the larger rod gives about a 56 foot range double the depth and uh, 
that's what we're fishing. Oh, and then also I picked up a couple of things. Um, like I say, you know, this is a great tournament. It's a charitable tournament, and they really care about taking care of the trout. So when you catch fish, they only give you prizes, uh, or, you know, you're only on the leaderboard. They'll, they will broadcast on their Facebook page. They'll post the weights of the fish. So you know if you can weigh your fish, it'll save you a trip into the weigh station and it'll let you put that fish back in the water to keep it healthy. So I wanted to, I don't have a scale, so I got one with a, um, a fish friendly um, grip here. I don't know if you could see that, but this is the least damaging. Some just have a steel hook and this will be kinder to the fish. And uh, the last thing I got, which was crucial, because as I was doing all this thread and align and whatnot with leaders and stuff, trying to cut braid, it's a pain in the ass to cut braid. Uh, the best way I had found to do it was with a razor, and even that was not leaving a nice, uh, clean end. So I happened to come across the same store that I ran to, that I'm always running to, uh, because they have the best fish uh, gear selection in town, is uh, it's running. So you get it? That's what I'm trying to hint at. Had this thing. It's a boomerang makes it. A little uh, snip. It's, it's so great, I bought two of them. This one's got a light in it. One for the box, one for the boat. Squeeze this. Blank these things come out. Boom. Cleanest cut, easiest way to cut braid I've ever found. Awesome. So that's going to come in handy. That's it. That's all I got for tonight. Uh, tomorrow, it's the day before the tournament, we're going to be packing the cooler. So I hope you can join me. I'll see you then. I'm barely beating the deadline. There's about 10 minutes left in the day before the tournament. Tournament starts in less than six hours. Cooler is packed. Uh, ice and beverages are in the car. Got uh, things all ready. Nice bananas. Gonna be a good thing tomorrow. Always good for the boat. Check it out. Got the Newtons. Got a lifesavers, right? No pun intended. Got some other things here, but check it out. Check it out. This is the best right here. Maz Pitzels. Show you one real quick. What it's all about. It's going to be so good tomorrow. Perfect boat food. Not going to eat on camera. That's a surprise. Sammy's. Marticello bread from the uh, Italian store. Some cold cuts from Waggies. Different uh, format here, same filling, but using uh, one of them uh, King's Hawaiian rolls and let's see, right? Okay. And so, as promised, gonna do a quick uh, make some trout bait before uh, midnight here. Got the flavors, a little anise is going to be one of them. The other one's going to be maple and garlic. And this is all I use. And I use these little jars. Oh, but wait a minute. Got to get the secret ingredient. Come with me here. Check it out. Oh. Oh, son of a bitch. Someone 
Osman didn't close the bag, but that's no hassle. Uh, check it out. Mini marshmallows in, in various colors. Can you see that? Let me see. Some purple and stuff like that. So, all I'm going to do is I start with the flavorings, the scents. Do a little uh, maple. Oop. Doesn't need that much. Just a little, little garlic powder. Ding, 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 ding. To taste. That might be a little much. Then. Who knows? I don't know what trout like exactly. Put the marshmallows in there. Only about uh, halfway full because you need some shaking room. Shake it up. And these are nice one piece lid, right? Perfect size. Don't like glass, don't love glass on the boat, but I like that this is going to not, can't really smell it until you and next one pure anise Just a little, just going to say a little bit goes a long way in. Ooh. Black jelly beans, my favorite. Most people don't like black jelly beans, so guess what? I learned to love them because they're abundant. Never have to fight over a black jelly bean. People would be like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't want these. I'd be like, yeah, man. I used to pretend not to like them. Until I found that, like, even if I told people I liked them, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to. I pretended not to like them because I thought, like, well, people are then, they're going to, like, taste them and go, ooh, yeah, man, these are good. Never happened, man. <laughs> Either love them or you hate them. All right. This is just anise. Ooh, that's strong, though. Sorry. This reminds me kind of of uh, Easter bread a little bit. So that's it. Better make sure these are all right. Yep. All right. I gotta get some sleep. Oh, hey, glad you could hop on board. It's the uh, first day of the tournament, about noon 34. It's very windy today. A lot of uh, I'm in the coffee. Whoa! I'm in the coffee spillers right now. Uh, we've been fishing this morning with saw bellies, and we've also been drifting a whole bunch, um, trolling a whole bunch, but mostly uh, the wind has just been kind of tossing us around. It's a gorgeous day. It's probably hot, but you can't tell with the nice breeze. We're uh, Right now at the north end, and word is that the south end of the lake's getting all the action. Right now, first place looks like a new record, a lake trout, almost 30 pounds, 29 point something. 
So that's what's up. It's almost time to grab a sandwich and uh, this morning we were on the west side of the, of the lake. I dropped off my wife. She's gonna let the dog out, pick up the kids, come back around two. Uh, I scooted over to the east side. Uh, it's, it's rougher here, like I say, a lot of coffee spillers. You can see here. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got my thing on. See? A little bit. A little bit wavy. Not terrible. There's our rig. I think right now I got about four or five colors out. So far, uh, not too lucky. Did get a uh, a pike or a uh, or a redfin of pretty good size. Haven't seen a trout yet. All right. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're sitting down to a good lunch. And uh, if there's any action out here, I'll go live again. Otherwise. Maybe I'll uh, see you at the end of the day. Check it out. We might have to get the scale here. Not a bad looking uh, fish there. Let's see what she weighs. Get back. I'll get back to you in a sec. All right, this is the recap day one of the trout tournament. I still feel like I'm on the boat. Uh, I would say in a nutshell, day one was delicious. So good. Caught one fish, uh, one trout anyway, and uh, didn't make it to the leaderboard, but uh, made it to the frying pan. I uh, probably would have returned the fish. Uh, to its environment but it was not looking good so it went into the live well then it went into some parchment paper and then it went into the oven and next it's going in our bellies hope you can join us tomorrow we're gonna start early good morning it is day two of the trout derby I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, right behind me, I'm at the Yacht Club, ready to pick up my honey, and all them sailboats behind me sound like uh, several, several, several pair of wind chimes, you know, with all the things hanging from the masts and whatnot, all the stays hitting the masts and the metal. It's nice music for the morning. Uh, it's nice and cool so far. It's supposed to get hot, but it feels really good now. You can see I'm wearing my windbreaker. But uh, it's supposed to get up to like 88 degrees by 11 or noon or 1. So we'll see how long we can take the heat. I hope you are enjoying a good breakfast, and I hope you can jump aboard later today. Uh, if we get into anything exciting, we'll go live. Have a great day. So, today I've been fishing at the south end of Canandaigua Lake, and it became a good day to do a wrap up for the Trout Derby because. Uh, caught two rainbows so far, kept one, was able to release the other one, and uh, I don't want to catch any more because I think the creel limit is one, and I want to respect that, and I want to keep them in the water alive for next year. Uh, so to recap the tournament, uh, total raised for charities now is 240k so it was a good year 
The winning fish was a Laker, 29 and a quarter pounds. And that's a new derby record by far. Smashed the old record. Uh, day one and two in a nutshell. Day one was very windy. Uh, so caught my first lake trout ever. Uh, around 2 in the afternoon and then just decided to bag it. The plan was to pick up the rest of the crew, the kids, and my wife, but it was way too windy and choppy. So called that day a little bit early. The second day uh, was nicer. Everybody came out. We trolled around, didn't get anything. Um, so uh, well, like I say, we're all winners. Uh, you know, it's a tournament for a uh, derby, for charity, and everybody wins that way. And the upshot of it was that uh, I'm learning how to catch trout. So check out what we got in the cooler. Just to show you what I mean. It's a nice rainbow. I got trolling this morning, or this, early this afternoon. Can you see it? Still in good shape. Remember to uh, get a couple of bags of ice this morning. Also, other things I've learned. The general store in Cheshire not only do they make a killer BTL, I gotta call it a BLT. I ordered a, uh, I mean, I gotta call it a BTL. I ordered a BLT, but look, check it out. It's a BTL. Anyway, look at how much bacon is in there. Oh my God, they did not skimp on the bacon. Oh, excuse me for a second. <clears throat> it's a great sandwich, but look what else they got. mother's milk right there so that's gonna be part of uh, the routine stop in there fill up the cooler uh, what else the equipment the rod was great caught my first laker on it now let's see let's do a little experiment here See how the rod holders did. Taking off this rod holder to see if it left any marks. Let me put you down for a sec here. Just coax these things out. Good news is <laughs> they don't slip out easily. And check this out. I like the result. Nary, nary a mark on my uh, precious rail. So again, these brackets that I used are the real deal. Very happy. Um, they didn't mar up the boat and they did a great job. They're totally solid. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I've been doing more uh, filming than editing, so keep an eye out. There's lots of stuff on the way. And uh, I'll catch you next time.